Welcome back to Aunt Debbie's Boutique. If you are new to the channel, it would probably be helpful if you would watch the introductory video. I'll link it in the description box below. Today we're going to continue on in our series of baby items that we're making, and we're going to uh, work upon the baby bib we did last time. We did this baby bib where on the applique we did a small zigzag stitch all the way around. Today we're going to learn a new method of applique, and since um, there's already a video on how to make the bib and how to make the burp rag, which is identical to the bib. I'm mainly just going to concentrate on the applique this time, but we will put it all together. What you're going to need is your baby bib pattern, and we're not going to use this duck pattern today. We're going to use something different. This pattern you can either uh, freehand your own or uh, there's a pattern available in my Etsy store, AuntDebbie'sBoutique.com, without the apostrophe, and I'll link it below. And you can buy the pattern for $2.50 that shows step-by-step -step how to make the baby bib. It does not include this method of applique. The method of applique it includes is the one on the duck that we did. So, uh, but if you need the pattern, you can get it there. We also have kits available that have everything you need to create this project, and they are $15. And what we're gonna need, and this is all included in the kits you get, is a uh, 14, let me see it, 10 inch wide piece of fabric by 14 inches. And out of that, we uh, create our baby bib. We cut out our baby bib on the fold. And you can refer to the other video, which I'll link below for help on that. And we're going to cut out a backing fabric. You can use uh, anything you want, but the more absorbent, the better. Uh, just for functionality purposes. I like to use terry cloth. That's what this is. But you can also use flannel or anything else that's a little thicker. You can even use cotton, but it won't be very absorbent. It'll be pretty, though. You'll need about a six-inch square. This is bigger than that. Of uh, either heat and bond light or wonder under. Uh, make sure it's the sew-in kind. I know for a fact that Heat and Bond Ultra Hold is not a sew-in kind. It is one that you are to permanently uh, and fix something, and you don't want to stitch on top of it. If you get one of those, it's going to gum up your needles, and you won't be able to sew it. So you do not want the Ultra Hold Heat and Bond, and I'm sure there's applicable one of... Uh, Wonder under so make sure that you make that it is the sew in type, and you're going to need some fabric squares. I'm missing one. What happened to it? Okay, let me find my other fabric square. There it is. Sorry about that. Uh, just some fabric scraps to do your applique with, and I just roughly drew a balloon because we don't want to tackle anything as intricate as that duck for a, for a beginning lesson on this. So I'm going to do something that's a little more rounded. So I drew this pattern and what we're going to do, I'm going to cut it out And then I am going to trace it. I think I'm going to have all my fabrics going the same direction since they're the same print, just different colors. But you, you can do them however you want. And we're going to trace it on each one of these. I'm using just a regular pen here. It'd probably be better to use some sort of erasable marker, but it doesn't matter. It's not going to show. But 
they make uh, markers that you can iron and they they go away or some of them are air dry some of them use water uh, the friction or friction pens which I have some up right here I don't know how you say that but these are ones that uh, they erase with heat and I'll link those below too But since this is on the back side and it's going to be at our seam, it's not going to show. Okay. Now that we have um, traced it on, we're going to cut them out, but we're going to leave about a quarter of an inch on each side of these. Now then, I'm going to take some scrap fabric. And I'm going to cut several pieces that are as big as my balloon. Now, most people for this method use, um, believe it or not, used dryer sheets because they're very thin. They're like a very, they're cross between a paper and a fabric. They are a fabric and they use those. But since this is going to a baby, I didn't want a chance. I don't know what chemicals are in used baby, I mean used dryer sheets. So I opted to use uh, just some scrap fabric. And I'm actually gonna use the uh, back side of the fabric. So just in case, I don't think the prints will show through. Well, it might. Maybe I better find a different fabric. Hold on while I get a different fabric. Okay, I found some, uh, just some plain white. I'm sorry, I thought those wouldn't show through, but when I held it up in the light, I could tell that it was going to. So what we're going to do is put right sides together on this, and we're gonna stitch right on this seam. So let's go over to the sewing machine and stitch these three items. I'm gonna stitch right exactly on the line and I do not have to leave a place to turn it. I'll show you why. Now that we've stitched these, I want to come in with my trusty peaking shears. Uh, you can just cut the outside of the white off with regular scissors if you don't have pinking shears and then clip all the way around. But to me, this is so much faster and I think it lays smoother. We don't want to cut our threads, but we want to cut all three of these out like this. Okay, now that we have them all trimmed down, we want to turn it inside out, but we don't have an opening to do that. Well, since this is going to be on the back side, and this is why people usually use uh, dryer sheets, we're just going to cut a slit back here. Now, you can do it either with a seam ripper or with a scissor. Let's, let's do this. Because we only want to cut 
through the white layer. It's not cooperating very well. There we go. That's why a dryer sheet's a lot easier to handle. Okay. Got me a hole started. And I'm just gonna make an X, cut an X in the back of this. And then we'll turn it inside out. And these are kind of small to work with. So I don't really recommend it for children. the edges like we do every time we turn something and then I'm gonna give it good ironing might even starch it in a little bit okay let's go ahead and cut clip these others and turn them right out Okay, I'm sorry, we lost some footage again uh, due to my battery dying. But what I did is I cut out some Wonder Under or Heat and Bond. Uh, I, I traced the balloon on it. And then I cut it slightly smaller so that it wouldn't stick out on the balloons. I adhered it with an iron to the back of these balloons and then ironed them in place where I wanted them. Of course, I had to remove the backing paper after I ironed it to the back of the balloon before I could iron it to the bib. Then I also used some ribbon. I just used some ribbon that I use for machine, I mean for a ribbon embroidery, but you can use any kind of ribbon or even string, just whatever. Uh, and I just pinned it in place and I'm going to zigzag over that. Now you can either stitch real close to the edge with a straight seam, but it's hard to get it perfectly straight with your shape, or you can zigzag. And I'm gonna zigzag because it's more forgiving. And I'm going to widen my zigzag stitch when I get down here and just zigzag over these strings so they're not hanging loose for the baby to grab or stick in their mouth. Okay, let's go over to the machine. Okay, as I was saying when my battery went dead, if you're not seeing things well, if my camera angle isn't optimum, please leave a comment and I'll see if I can... Um, get a better angle. I've thought about wearing it on my forehead and maybe that would be easier for you to see what I'm doing, but just let me know in the comments. Okay, I'm gonna set it up for my zigzag again with a, a two stitch length and a one zigzag or width, which will make the width of the zigzag.
Now, since my pins were getting in the way, I'm going to stop and I'm going to zigzag the ribbons first. Getting to demonstrate with a piece of paper underneath because it will make your stitches lie much smoother. So let's try it. You can see how the ribbon's bulking up just a little bit. Let's try it with this one and see if it makes a difference. I bet it will. How much smoother this line lays than these two and it's just because this this works as a stabilizer just a piece of printer paper and when you're done you just tear it off and if there's a little bit of paper left behind it doesn't matter the first time it's washed that will be gone so I'm gonna put this paper under my balloons too didn't quite finish it there. Let's, or went off of the balloon. Okay, I'm just going to come right up here and zigzag across the bottom of this blue turquoise balloon. I like to keep those threads out of the way, but... over to the ironing board okay I'm back at the ironing board and we have our paper still affixed on the back I apologize that I did not demonstrate that from the beginning 
you turn on this camera and suddenly I forget my name. I can't sew straight. It's just uh, Murphy's Law at its best. So there is a distinct difference though in how smooth this ribbon lays by using the paper. I don't, there isn't that much difference in the balloons, but that's because they're two layers thick on top of the, uh, the bib layer. So I'm gonna give it a quick steam. Well, my iron again is not heated. I'll at least iron it pretty good. And if it had the steam, it would also help loosen the paper. But we're just going to gently tear the paper off. And cut a lot of these extra threads back here, although they will be on the inside of the bib, so they won't do any harm. I just don't like them. And you want to take out all the paper you can. Let's use a pen instead of the seam ripper there. Sometimes this helps to get get it started but the paper being under the seam is not going to hurt anything at all one little piece there and there okay cut off this extra ribbon now we have steam. And there's our applique. It, we don't have to worry about it raveling in the future. So if you don't like raw edges like we had on the duck and you prefer your edges to be turned under, that's the best way I know of. It's, it's so tedious to try to iron under a quarter of an inch all the way around some small uh, picture like this. So the best way is to either use used dryer sheets or uh, a lightweight fabric on the back. Now I'm going to take this back. First I'm going to pin the backing on it with right sides together, although there isn't a right side to this terry cloth. And then I'm going to take it back over to the machine my pins and stitch it three eighths of an inch from the edge. It's best to pin it on this side because it's best to sew on this side because you want, when you're measuring three eighths inch, you want to measure it from the fabric, not from your lining. I am going to stitch it. I'm gonna leave an opening over here of about three inches. So uh, we can turn it and I am also going to trim close to the seams with my pinking shears. If you don't have pinking shears, again, you can um, clip it, clip your seams about every half to a quarter inch, depending on how bit tight the curb is. Over here, you need to do about a quarter inch. Out here, you probably do about every half inch. And uh, so that it lays smoothly. If you don't clip your seams, it's, it's gonna be obvious when you turn it Wrong, uh, right side out. Okay, I'll stitch and I'll meet you back over here. Okay, I'm back from the sewing machine. I stitched three quarters of an inch all the way around, leaving an opening. Then I used my uh, pinking shears to trim. You really don't have to do that on the straight part. You only have to do it on the curved edges. So if you're clipping, you don't need to clip. 
the straight pieces. And I did not clip it here intentionally because if we cut it too short, it's gonna to be too hard to tuck in. So now I'm gonna turn it. Kind of roll the edges till you feel comfortable that you've got it all the way to the seam pulled out. And then we're going to iron it. Yeah, your iron's hot. And we're going to tuck in this open edge where we turned it and iron our 3 8 inch seam the same size as what we sewed with. It's ready to top stitch now. We're going to top stitch real close to the edge, about an eighth of an inch, and that's the purpose is so we catch this seam. If we top stitch too far in, the seam won't it won't catch it and it'll still be open. So our top stitching is doing double duty. Then we're going to uh, take a piece of Velcro, and this is the Velcro that I have and we want to make sure it is so in, not the sticky backed kind. I'm going to take about an inch and a half uh, just so there's room to adjust the baby bib. And I'm going to put one piece on the top side and one piece on the bottom side, making sure the hook hook and loop are facing outwards. We're just going to stitch around this rectangle. So I'm not gonna make you watch all that. I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, I'm back from doing the top stitching all the way around the edge and placing the Velcro on with one side face on the top side and one on the back side. So now it can be adjustable. If the baby's neck is bigger, it can adjust like that. If it's smaller, it can adjust like that. Okay, I'm gonna give it one final steam because I'm such a fanatic about ironing everything. It just makes your work so much more professional looking. Okay, we are through with this project finally. And I hope you learned something today in a new method of making applique. When you purchase one of my kits, there will be three coordinating or contrasting fabrics in them. And you can either make the balloons or duck or something of your choice. And I'm going to include the balloon pattern that I just drew um, on with the pattern. Uh, you can probably draw a much better one, but just in the event that you want it. So thanks for joining me today. Uh, I'm sorry for the technical part where we lost some of the footage. Uh, I'm just not a good camera operator. Join me next time where uh, we are going to make a baby blanket, a, ba a coordinating baby blanket. And uh, it will be like a quilt, but we're going to tie it instead of quilting it. 
Uh, we're not going to do a whole lot of quilting in this channel because there's so many good quilting channels out there that uh, I'm going to stick more with sewing for people who prefer uh, just making items over quilting. So, okay, thank you for joining me, and we'll see you next time. Remember, whatever you do, you do it to the glory of the Lord. Thank you.